Hi everyone, in this video we will see how can we create the Ignite server and Ignite client with the help of Java application. If you need to start a Ignite node, you can simply download the binary file of the Ignite or you can run the Ignite applications via the programming languages such as Java. In this video, we will see how can we create the Java application for the server as well as for the client. Here I have a project based out of Cradle where I have added the Ignite code library. And now in our Ignite server application, within this main method, we can use the classes from this Ignite code library to start our Ignite server. For that, let's add ignition.start. As soon as we call this a start method from the ignition, it will instantiate the Ignite server. Let's see that. It has started the Ignite server. And if you look here, we have the Ignite node started and there is some ID generated for it. And within this, we have got snapshot of the current topology. Basically, this provides the information of the cluster. Right now in this cluster, we have one server. That is what we have just started. And there are no clients. If you need to start the Ignite server, you just need to add this start method. Right now, whatever configuration is there in the default configuration, it has been applied to our application. This configuration is coming from the default configuration file, which is default config.xml. We can provide our own configuration by providing the configuration in the start method. So here we can give the Ignite configuration like this and whatever configuration we will define, it will be applied to our Ignite node. Here you can see we have got one warning, fail to resolve default logging config. By default, Ignite uses the Java util logging. Uh, and for that, we need to have one file logging.properties within the config folder. Apart from that, we can use log4j, we can use sl4j. For adding those libraries with Ignite, we need to have the respective version for that. If we want to use the sl4j, we need to have one library Ignite sl4j. If we add this library in our class path, in the Ignite server configuration, we can add the logging. Grid logger requires a specific implementation of the logger. Here we have used the sl4j logger for the ignite. So we can add the sl4j. If I just restart this application, so now it is not able to find out the static logger binder class. We need to add the sl4j library. So here is the library that we need to use. And with this library, if we rerun this application, now it has printed lots of logs. With the help of this logging, you will be able to see everything within the application. There are a couple of more configuration that we can add with our Ignite server. We can add the instance name with our application. For that, here in the configuration, we can set the instance name and say this is instance one. Also, to uniquely identify the node in a cluster, we need to set the consistent ID. And that is what we can add here like pfg dot set consistent id and say this id is node 1. For every node, this id has to be different. I am just running this application again. This time here, the server started OK and it has got the instance name as well. That is what we have defined over here. If we want to create another node, we can do the same thing. We can run another application and we will be able to have the server added into the cluster. Here we have got one other application, which is Ignite Cache Client. It has the same dependencies. It has the consistent ID node 2 and it has the Ignite instance name 2. And now if I run this application, here you can see it started the instance 2. And right now it has two servers in the topology. Earlier we had only one server, but now as soon as we added another application, it has automatically added that into the cluster. Ignite automatically discovers the nodes on a cluster. Ignite started on the local host and it has a port 47101. How Ignite is noting this node with a cluster is because of the communication SPI. It discovers the application by TCP discovery. Apart from that, we can use the Zookeeper like the other discovery mechanism. Right now, we have the application running on the same machine. It is a local host. This application has a port 47101 and the server application that we were running has a port 47100. So whenever application starts, it has the default range of the port. So it starts within the specific ports. It automatically identifies the application running within certain ports. And in production, you will have your nodes running on different systems. How can we 
add that support. For that, with the Ignite, we need to set the TCP discovery. So here we have the set discovery SPI and we want to apply a TCP discovery here, TCP survey SPI. So here we are trying to discover the TCP connectivity and for that we need to set the IP addresses. We can set the IP finder and for that let's use the TCP discovery multicast IP finder. It is possible that in a system we have multiple nodes running so we need different ports to be discovered or there can be multiple hosts where the nodes are running then we need to find the different IPs of those nodes. Let's just define it in variable where we will set the IP addresses IP finder dot set addresses. We can provide a list of addresses to it with the host and the port combinations. Here we can add the IP address port combination 0.0.1 and the port right now it is running on the 47101 and 47100 port. We can also provide the multiple ports over here by providing the port range. Let's run this again. We are part of the same cluster and we have two servers running over here. Right now we don't have any client. If we need to define the client application in the configuration we just need to change the mode and here we are setting the client mode on as soon as we add this client mode as true this become a client application that means now the data will be stored only on the other node that we have defined as a server and this can be used to get the data from the cache or to update the data on the cache so it has become a client this client is called the thin client. Client is connecting with the server nodes by applying the same mechanism as the server communication. If we want to go ahead with adding the data on a cache and accessing the data, let's see how can we do that. To define the cache, we can define our cache in the server and also we can do the same thing from the client application. So there is no difference. The cache will be created on the server only, but you have luxury to define the cache from the client as well. So let's define one cache here. We can create the cache by simply calling the create cache method or we can get the existing cache or if that does not exist we can simply create that. Create the cache now and we can pass the name of cache like my cache. Let's get the type of this cache. So here you can see we have got the ignite cache type but it has two attributes object and object. So this is the key and this is the value. Whatever cache we define, we need to have a specific type of the keys that is supported by that cache and corresponding values type. Let's say we need to define a key as integer and the value as string. Integer and the value is string. We can add the value into this cache by applying put method and we can pass the value one and the value as pp and we have another value pp1. Same thing we can do in our server as well. Usually if you have a cache which is being used by multiple clients then it is good idea to create the cache on the server. Instead of adding the value here in the client application let's add this value on the server application and here let's give it a name server. In the server we have the cache. From the client application we are now instead of setting the values we can get the value from the cache. What all caches are there in the server, we can simply get those values here. We have ignite client dot cache names. We need to get the value from cache. Instead of creating, we can simply use cache method. Let's print the value of this cache, which is what we can do. Just restart this application. In our server, there is no cache. To access these caches, we need to restart the server application. All right, so server has been started. Now, in this application, whenever we have done all of the things, we need to close the Ignite instance because this client is no longer needed. So we can do that by just closing the Ignite instance by applying close method. Let's rerun the application. The application has been shut down. But before that, let's see if we are able to access the cache. You can see we have got the my cache that is coming from the server and printed the cache values but now if we need to get the value get one and rerun this now we have got the value for the key one from the server this time whatever value is there in the server we are able to access it now let's do one thing we just shut down the server this time we will not set any value in here and rerun this 
we go back to client application and try to access the cache values, my cache value is null. All the value which was there earlier has gone because the data is stored in memory. By default, the Ignite works as an in-memory cache. But if we want to have the data stored somewhere so that with any region, if your server is going down, you should be able to get back the existing data, then the data has to be stored in the disk. For that, we can use the Ignite persistent. Whenever we define the Ignite server, it creates the directory Ignite and it has a couple of folders. And you can see here we have the DB folder where we don't have anything. If we need to define the persistent mechanism in our Ignite server, then we need to add a couple of more configuration. First of all, in the configuration, we can set the data storage configuration. And here we can define a new configuration. To this configuration, we can provide different options. Let's see what are those. The first option is we need to define the persistent mechanism. If we we'll set that value to true, data will be stored in disk. To set the data, first of all, we need to get the data region. So here we have the default data region configuration. And if we set the value to true, now whatever data we store in our cache will be stored in this. When we have the in-memory configuration, at that time, by default, the server cluster configuration is active. When we have the persistent enable, then it becomes inactive by default. So we have to specifically tell the cluster to be in active state. For that, we can define the configuration here. We can set the cluster state as active by applying cluster.set state. And here we can set the cluster state as active. So we have added some of the values here. It says cache with the same name is already started. Okay, now, if you look at the Ignite web directory, so here we have DB and we have data in the node one. So this is the consistent ID that we created for this node. For each node, it has defined the data directories. We have the data in the form of dot dat file. Ignite stores the data on this in the S2 database. Along with this, we have the wall, which is right ahead log and there are two folder one is archive and another one is the node where you can find the different segments whenever any operations like addition of new data or deletion of the data all the logs are stored in this archive files and whenever server goes down and it spawns up based on these right ahead logs the new state is created whatever data we need to add on the server that will be added automatically via these files. And when all the segments are filled, then it goes to the archive and similarly, new logs will be created. Instead of create cache, if I just say get or create cache and restart this application. So this time it has started successfully because now it is not trying to create the cache, but it is using the existing cache. Comment this out now. And if I restart the server, Right now, we are not setting any data into the cache and we will see the client behavior, how it works. So on the client side, if we run the application, it is able to access the BP value because even if we haven't set any value on the cache right now, the data was already available in the disk. Data is being loaded into the cache from the existing data on the disk. Right now, by default, this path is being created, but in the storage configuration, we can set the storage path. Similarly, we can set the path for write ahead log or the archive path. For a specific cache, I can disable the write ahead log. Ignite server dot cluster dot disable wall. Here I will disable the wall for my cache. We have seen how can we use the in-memory cache. And we have also seen how can we use the internal persistent of the Ignite. In the next video, we will see how can we add the persistent with the existing database. Thanks for watching and happy coding.